we yeah so to get started actually i would love to hear from folks in the room uh, maybe one person per organization if there's a bunch of you here um but would love to have you come off mute um introduce yourself in in english or in spanish um what organization you're coming from what state you're in and what you're interested in learning about during this webinar um would anyone like to volunteer to go first otherwise i'm going to pick somebody natalie Hi, I'm Natalie Bainey. I'm the operations manager for Nashville Foodscapes in Nashville, Tennessee. And we um, are worker owner, um, or our board of directors um, decided to enroll in the voluntary accident and short-term disability, as well as the dental and vision. So I'm mostly here to learn about that enrollment process. um yeah who alan do you want to go next for sure Great. hola a todos mi nombre es alan luis yo soy parte de la I'm alan luis i'm part of the organization poder emma i'm living in asheville north carolina and i'm here because i'm part of a cooperative network and we are looking at whether these benefits would be useful for our um, co-ops here in Asheville. So I'm very happy and interested to be here. I can hand over to whoever wants to go next. I can go. Um, my, my name is Amy Worthen. Uh, she and her uh, pronouns. I uh, work for Collaborativa La Milpa, uh, and we're a nonprofit organization, uh, and uh, we uh, help support. Um, well, we have member organizations, and one of them is Poder Emma that supports cooperatives. So, uh, thanks. Uh, great. Want to go to? Oh, Zaina, go ahead. Um, I can go next. Hello, everybody. My name is Zaina. Um, I go by she, her pronouns. Um, I am calling in today from Reims, California. Uh, we're an Arab bakery and restaurant group located in the Bay Area, California. Um, we're in the process of, of transitioning into worker ownership. Um, and at the you know at the very top of our list is um, figuring out a great benefits program for our team. Um, we've been doing kind of the Qsera uh, reimbursement style program up until this point in time, just because it seems very flexible. Um, but I am very curious to learn more about what other options we have in terms of offering, offering group benefits that go beyond just the reimbursement program. Happy to be here. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, I'm going to go to Brittany, then Ingrid, then uh, Becky. I'm just going by who I see on the screen. Hi, my name's Brittany. Um, I go by she, her pronouns, and I'm um, forming a cooperative called Catalyst Cooperative Healing in Western Massachusetts, and we're a group of mental health workers. Um, we are in the process still of incorporating, and we are looking for um, benefits. So we're interested to see what you have to offer. Great. Um. Hey everyone, uh, Ingrid from uh, uh, She, Her, uh, Asheville, North Carolina with the Chispas Property Management and Maintenance Co-op. Um, and luckily we had Alan gave us a little, with a, within our co-op network, kind of a little in info session that was super helpful and covered some of the basics. So just excited about the follow-up and um, learning other questions that come up there. So thanks for hosting. Awesome, North Carolina represent. Um, we go to Becky, then Jesse, then Miriam. Um, hey, everybody. I'm 
Becky Brown, she, her pronouns, also in Asheville, North Carolina, uh, with Power in Numbers Bookkeeping Co-op. Um, and as Ingrid and some others have said, we are exploring as a network um, what, what benefits we might be able to um, offer in our co-ops. And we were glad to find out that um, even though all of, all of our all of the co-ops in our networks are LLCs taxed as partnerships um, that we could still have access to benefits through the network. So that was great. Thanks. Definitely. Hi, my name is uh, Jesse Mishka. I'm at Equal Exchange. And we have um, a very, we have a traditional insurance plan and at, we're lar larger and older co-op. Um, but we are not, which we're satisfied with the benefits, but not with the cost and the rising cost. And we're exploring things like self-insurance or other options. And one of the things that came up was, what does the Federation offer, which I realize is probably targeted more towards small organizations, but I figured I should come and get a baseline before I start talking maybe to Maddie about what could happen for, um, for larger organizations. Thank you. Um, Rosa Peña. Oh, dale, dale. Hola, mi nombre es Miriam Porras. Hi, my name is Miriam Porras. And I'm here in Asheville, North Carolina. I'm here with Chief Gus, which is a property um, management and maintenance co um, co op. I'm here to learn a little bit more after the presentation that. Um, one of our dear colleagues gave us. My pronouns are she, her. Thank you, Marianne. I'm gonna to go to Carla, Marie, then Seda. Hi, I'm uh, Carla Juarez. My pronouns are she and her. And I am with Cooperación Santana. Um, in, in helping out a nanny uh, care share, Cooperative in California, Orange County, also occupying the Hashiman and, and Tongo land. And I want to understand the basics so I could help um, others in the cooperative also understand. So hopefully I can answer their questions. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, I'm Marie. My pronouns are she, her. I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. I'm with Natalie at Nashville Foodscapes. Um, we are a first year co-op landscaping company and are figuring out benefits um, and everything else that Natalie said. So we're excited. Hi everyone, this is Jada, uh, she, her pronouns. I'm with People Solar Energy Fund and our mission is to build community owned solar in BIPOC and low-income communities. And we're fairly new and we will be offering worker benefits for the first time. So I'm like uh, here to learn about the benefits. Thank you. Great. Welcome. Hi everyone. My name is Anna. I'm also from Cooperación Santana in um, Santa Ana, California. And in addition to the Nanny Share Cooperative that Carla mentioned, we work with, with uh, uh, Urban Farm Co-op, uh, Cooperative, Cafe Cooperative. And so, yeah, just interested in learning more for folks um, who are gonna prepare to launch and, and look for benefits. Awesome. Um... I'm a little bit lost track of who has gone and who hasn't gone. I think we've got Angelus and Fernando. Um, and then if anybody else wants to go, feel free. Hi, my name is Angelus. Um, I'm with Bridging Languages Co-op in Michigan. Pronouns are she, her, hers. And we just launched, I believe, like a month or two ago. Um, so we just are really interested in knowing what benefits we can roll for. Great, and Fernando, if you are able to, please, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Hi, 
Hola, eh, bueno, mi nombre es Fernando Huerta y my yo soy un... Fernando Huerta, I'm with a worker center and there we formed our first cooperative in 2008. It was a cooperative of workers, of cleaning workers. Right here in the state of Illinois, Illinois, there wasn't one at that point, and we created a whole movement in 2019. We push for a cooperative law that was approved, and we're also working on that. I'm also working on uh, organizing uh, ambulant vendors, and now we have we have a shared kitchen of workers. So it's a cooperative that we created, and I'm also the administrator, the member of that cooperative. And so I've been participating in these uh, talks, uh, workshops, uh, classes. I like it. And I, I'm here because I want to learn more because I also interested in having benefits for the workers and the most affordable that we can find. Also, uh, we know it's uh, health is very expensive in this country. So I'm happy to be here. I'm here to learn a lot more. Thank you. Great. And uh, Celia, I see your hand raised. I think you haven't gone yet. Hola, buenas tardes. Hi, good Yo. afternoon. So my name is Celia Alvarez and I'm part of a very small cooperative, which is uh, of colors. Uh, it, we're in San Jose, California. And we're doing consulting work for organizations working with the Latino community. And I'm here to uh, clarify some things. The first workshop that we had with these health plans, because as my colleague was saying, it's very difficult to have uh, medical insurance that's not gauging our eyes out. So we're very, uh, very hopeful that we have uh, dental, uh, you know, uh, vision because we can't get health insurance here in California, but we're hoping that we have that soon and at least to start with these two basic services for us. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you so much. Um, has, have I missed anybody else? I saw Rosa introducing himself in the chat. Welcome, Rosa. Great. Well, it's so nice to be here with you all. Um, really cool to hear just the, the the geographic span of where everybody's coming from. We've got a lot of folks from North Carolina. We've got folks from California, from Michigan, um, from New York. It, it's, yeah, I mean, healthcare, we all need healthcare. And um, it, is something that is challenging and something that our members are trying to navigate across the country. Um, today, I'm going to focus mostly on the dental and vision insurance and the accident and disability insurance provided by the USFWC um, because they are the most uniform. Um, I do, I'm hearing a lot of people with interest in healthcare and a lot of people talking about the expense of healthcare. Um, so I do want to give a little bit of context on sort of where, where our program is at with that right now. Um, basically, we're able to offer dental and vision insurance and accident and disability insurance nationally because they are seen by the insurance companies as simpler or sort of a lower financial risk for the insurance companies. Um, health insurance in this country, as everybody knows, is really expensive. And there's also a lot of rules coming from both the federal government and state governments and the insurance companies themselves that make it pretty much impossible to offer one health insurance plan that all the members of the USFWC can join. Um, so if you have particular questions about health insurance, um, I'd be really happy to talk about your specific co-op situation, um, sort of one-on-one, -on -one, 
Um, it's just really hard to, to generalize that for the diversity of business structures and group sizes and um, the different regulations state to state. Um, it's something we're doing a lot of research on and sort of hoping to develop more over the coming years. Um, but that's sort of where we're at right now. Um, we offer these dental and vision and accident and disability insurance programs because they're relatively easy um, for all of our members to have sort of an on-ramp onto. Um, like somebody mentioned, these plans are available to um, LLC co-ops. They're available to pretty much anyone who's working um, for dental and disability over 20 hours a week, um, as long as you're not an independent contractor. So being taxed on like a 1099 form, um, everything else is eligible which is great. We can be pretty open and pretty flexible with these plans. Um, we have, on the dental and vision program, we have about 500 people enrolled across our membership. So you'd be joining 50 other organizations that are part of the USFWC membership uh, across the whole country um, in really good company on that those plans. Um, We've been able to keep the costs pretty, pretty solid and the plans themselves are pretty good with really wide networks and good out of network coverage. Um, so the focus today is really gonna be on, on those plans. I think I am gonna do sort of just a brief overview of all of it and then stop for questions um, in between the segments. Cause I know it sounds like some people just want sort of the general information and some people I've been talking to, or I know have seen the materials and might have some more specifics. Um, and yeah, I, as, as I like to start every uh, worker benefits webinar or info session, I do just want to affirm that healthcare is a human right. Um, it should not be as hard as it is for people to access healthcare. Um, it shouldn't be something that we have to navigate on a workplace by workplace basis. It should just be something that we all have the right to because we are people who need healthcare. Everybody needs healthcare. Um, so this program exists to sort of help support us accessing and navigating the system. And I'm really privileged to, to be connected with you all and to be able to support and answer questions as best I can. Um, like I said, these plans are open to all of our members. Um, they're open to all types of business structures. They're open to people who uh, have individual tax identification numbers rather than social security numbers. Um, I've also put a lot of work into making sure that they're as inclusive as the companies and regulations will allow of uh, LGBTQIA folks in our communities. Um, I'm always open to feedback and suggestions. Um, it's my role, I see, to make this as expansive as I possibly can within the confines that are given to me. Um, the other thing that's just important to note is that I am not a licensed insurance broker. Um, my role in this is sort of as an educator and a communicator of the options. Um, but I work with our partner at Diversified Human Solutions to uh, implement these plans. And, and it's that company that is like the direct uh, sort of liaison with the insurance companies and that does the sort of like technical things that are required. Um, yeah. So like I was saying before, with dental and vision, um, the plans, because we have hundreds of people on these plans, we're able to get the benefits of like, if we were a huge company, um, we get to sort of pool all together with our little companies doing different things all over the country um, and act with the insurance companies as though we are a big company. Um, and so we can leverage, it gives us more flexibility, it gives us a better plan. Um, it makes it so that things like routine maintenance, routine dental care, routine vision care um, is at either free or almost no cost copays. Um, 
which is unusual for small group plans or individual plans. Um, and you also get access to me and to our broker um, to support with administrative elements. Um, for dental and vision insurance, uh, we have some set requirements that are meant to just sort of keep the plan as sustainable as possible. Um, all of our organizations that are members are welcome to join. Associate members have to pay $500 in dues minimum. Um, we, and we also require that workplaces pay up to 50% of the monthly premiums, which is the monthly cost of the insurance each month. Um, for the dental insurance, each workplace has to enroll up to 70% of its workers that don't have that insurance through another means. Um, for individuals who are trying to get the dental and vision insurance through their workplaces, um, we again try and keep the eligibility as expansive as the insurance companies will allow. Um, so workers must either be on payroll or must be worker owners of the business. So you're either being taxed on a W-2 or a K-1. Um, folks must work an average of 20 hours a week um, and must have either a social security number or a taxpayer identification number. Um, I never see those. Uh, they get sort of passed directly onto the insurance companies through the forms that we collect. Um, the plans offer dependent coverage. So if you have a partner or a child or children who want to be on the plan, they're welcome to join. Um, we don't care what gender you are or what gender your partner is. Um, the only thing that needs to exist is sort of like an establishment that you have shared bills or shared residency. Um, that's not something we collect, but it's something that you could be asked for. Um, so that's important to know. Um, and then um, I've tried to make my systems as flexible as I can for folks who use different names that might be on their legal documentation. Um, so while the insurance companies will require collecting um, legal name and legal gender marker, uh, we, I have a system where sort of you can submit a, a chosen name that in my system and when I'm interacting with you or your workplace, I'm using the chosen name rather than the legal name. Um, yeah. So those are sort of the basic eligibility pieces of the dental and vision plan. Um, this is sort of a, a window into some of the highlights from the dental plan, which is provided by Emeritus, which is a big dental insurance or big insurance company that runs a big dental plan. Um, like I was saying before, it covers uh, routine exams and cleanings and x-ray sets um, completely. So uh, no charge to you each year. And then for more complicated procedures, uh, it will cover either 80 or 50% of the cost depending on what the procedures are. Um, the other really useful thing about the Emeritus plan is that it offers the exact same coverage for out-of-network dentists. So even if your dentist doesn't take insurance or doesn't take Emeritus, you can still pay out of pocket and then submit a claim and Emeritus will pay you um, the amount that they'll cover of, of that, those dental services. So if you feel really good with one dentist, you don't have to necessarily change plans or change dentists. Um, and for IMED, which is the vision insurance company, they offer uh, exams with a $10 copay. Um, then they have quite good coverage for, um, oops, sorry, quite good coverage for your glasses or your contact lenses. Um, I recently bought glasses through IMED and they covered hundreds and hundreds of dollars of the cost. Um, so it's really, it, I think really pays off um, if you are a person who needs glasses or contacts. Um, these are the monthly rates. So the way that uh, dental and vision insurance works is that uh, you'll have 
um, your co-op or your business will have a roster that gets, uh, everybody submits a form, which becomes a roster. And then each month, the insurance company bills the USFWC for the entire insurance plan. And then we split out the bills to each member for the amount of all the individuals that are affiliated with that business. Um, so the billing happens um, through the Federation for the dental and vision plans. Um, and so it starts off at $36 a month for an individual worker for dental insurance and $7.80 a month for an individual on vision insurance. Um, and then there's the additional expenses if you're adding your partner or your children or your partner and children. Um, what's really nice is that the cost is the same whether you have one kid or 10 kids. Um, you can, yeah, it just, it's the same cost. Um, so that's the per, per person rates. And then in addition to that, each month, each organization gets charged one monthly uh, administrative fee that helps cover the costs of like, mostly my staff time, um, honestly, doing uh, technical support, building out educational resources, doing research into more plans and just maintaining um, the program over time. And so these are um, based on which benefits your group is enrolled in and how many people are in the plan. And that's one per organization per month. Um, I'm gonna stop right there and see if there are questions because I just went through a lot of information about dental and vision insurance. Yeah, Anna, I'm seeing your hand. Um, thank you for, for sharing. Um, I had a question as you, you talk about the individual. I think, yeah, it's that, it's that slide. Um, mm -hmm. And then organization. Um, what the cost of the individual, will that be the worker or, or their co-op paying? So the costs on the cost on this top chart that are mm -hmm. per person. So this is, this is $36 each for every person in your organization that's enrolled in the dental insurance. Um, and then the uh, administrative fee is just for the organization once a month. Right, I guess I'm wondering if um, then that per person is what each individual member would pay. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we require that the organization pay up to 50% of the mm, workers great. fee. Um, and then it's really up to the organization to determine what is like the budgetary, what's budgetarily feasible. Um, whether you wanna cover everybody's insurance full cost for individual workers, or if you wanna go give them dependent coverage as well. Um, we don't require that the workplace offer 50% coverage for these additional costs, um, but you can. And so that's minimum 50% of the worker fee. Got it. Thank you. That was my yeah. question. Thank you. Yeah, Zena, I'm seeing your hand. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, is there also flexibility for, so you said 70% um, or it's preferred that 70% of um, workers be signed up for the plans, mm -hmm. is that right? And um, um, is there flexibility for folks to do either vision or dental or both? or is the goal for us to kind of choose go all in on that one? That's a great question. Um, so the 70% threshold is only for dental insurance. Um, 
And the requirement is that 70% of workers who do not have coverage through a different means have to be enrolled in the dental insurance. So if you have like 20 people in your organization and five of them get dental insurance through a partner or a parent, they're not calculated in that 70% amount. Um, beyond that, people really have a lot of freedom to decide if they want to enroll in the dental or vision or both. Um, the company has to decide, are we going to offer dental or vision or both? And so once the company's made that decision, then it's really on the individual to decide, do I want vision insurance? Do I want just dental? Um, and yeah, we do, we do have more people enrolled on dental than in vision because not everybody needs the vision insurance. You have a, a question in the chat, Maddie. Um, it says, are there any um, qualifiers uh, for being able to ac access the accident and disability coverage? For example, cool. hours per week. Yeah, I'm gonna go into accident and disability uh, once we get through the dental and vision, but that is a great question. So I'll save that. Um, Celia, do you have a question? Yes, I do. Um, I don't remember if I made this question the first time, but uh, I just want to make sure. What's mm -hmm. the difference between worker plus children than family? I mean, how many children are on the $72 that are covered uh, versus the family? Yeah, that's a great question. So worker plus children is if you're enrolling just the worker and then any amount of children that they have. Um, the difference with family is that that includes the partner. So family is worker plus partner plus however many children they're both legal custodians of. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Cool. Um, we're good on questions there. I'm gonna jump over to um, how the open enrollment process goes. And yeah, because that's sort of the next step given that we're in our open enrollment period right now. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, making the decision to enroll in the dental or vision benefits is, um, you know, it's a decision that needs to be made accounting for like the financial feasibility, do people want the benefits? Do people need the benefits? Um, so it's gonna be different for each group. Maybe you have vision insurance through a different means that you feel good about. So you only wanna want offer the dental insurance. Um, maybe you can only afford to offer one and so you pick dental because everybody needs dental and vision is more on a case by case basis. You know, Whatever it is that the decision is, um, is, yeah, I mean, it just goes to the flexibility of the program. Um, so it's a group decision. You can refer to the documents that um, we make available through our website. You can refer back to older webinars um, and you can email me questions at benefits at usworker.coop uh, whenever you want and I'm happy to to answer whatever questions as many times as it needs to happen. Um, I know this stuff is really confusing and overwhelming and is sort of its own language. Uh, and so that's what I'm here for. Um, once you are at the point of being ready to enroll, you email that benefits at usworker.coop address. Um, and I will send along the roster and the enrollment form. Um, the roster, I sort of screenshotted a, a sliver of it down here. It's available in English and Spanish. Um, this is where you fill in all the people who are going to enroll, um, the workers and their dependents. 
um, this is really important because the other piece that then has to happen is that each worker must fill out a form online and I'll send that link along once you're ready to enroll. Um, and this is where people are giving their names, their social security number or their ITIN. Um, all of this information is required for the enrollment to be complete. And then I check these forms that we receive against the roster to make sure that there are no errors. Um, and if there are any discrepancies, um, we can resolve them so that the enrollment can go ahead properly. Um, this form is also available in Spanish that when you go to the website, there's a big en español at the top um, that is very easy to access. Um, yeah, and then after that, you know, we'll be in email communication about is the process done? Have I received enrollment forms from all the people who are on your roster? Um, this all happens before December 8th, which is the end of open enrollment. Um, there's a little wiggle room there, but you only get to know that because you're here on this webinar. Um, and yeah, then January 1st, 2022, the benefits begin. People receive their insurance cards and they can begin to uh, make their dental appointments, make their vision appointments, go buy their glasses, whatever it is that they need. Um, yeah, and I continue to be available to help troubleshoot, to send cards if people haven't received them. Um, yeah. So that kind of wraps up the dental and vision. Uh, so I'm gonna pause there again to see if there's questions. And after that, I'll move into the accident and disability. I have a question. I don't know if there's somebody ahead of me. No, go ahead. Um, is there any um, time I don't know. How, I'm going to say it in Spanish because I don't know how to say it in English. Sure, are I'll hear the translation. Are you limited para Is que there any limit for being registered once you're already in the program? Can we, we, once we're registered, can we, can we withdraw at any time? Or do we have to wait a year or two years? Is there any kind of like fixed contract that you have to be at least in the, in the program and, you know, for six months or a year, or can like two months later, for example, if you can't afford to pay it after two months, can you withdraw? Mm -hmm. um, you, that's a really good question. Um, I will tell you that the vision insurance company doesn't care. Um, the vision insurance, you can sort of, you can end whenever you need to. Um, dental can be a little bit more tricky, but I haven't, encountered any problems with um, people who need to stop the insurance because they can't afford to pay for it. Um, I haven't encountered any problems with people stopping. Um, what they really don't want you to do is to start and stop the insurance. Like once you've stopped it, you really can't start it again until the next open enrollment period. Um, I'm seeing a question in the chat. Uh, sorry if I missed this, but can we enroll new workers before the next enrollment period? We're planning to hire new workers after the deadline. Um, that's a really good question. Um, people who join the co-op or join the business um, mid-year are allowed to enroll when they join. Um, so you can even set like a sort of temporary like a qualification period, if people aren't eligible for benefits for a month or two, um, once they complete whatever the eligibility period that you've set is, then they can enroll if they're a new worker. These are really good questions. If a worker, another question, what about a worker who is working under 20 hours and then moves to full-time? 
Um, once they move to full time, that would be considered newly qualifying. Um, so they could enroll at that time. Um, even if they move from 19 hours to 20 hours, they can enroll then. Hi, I have a question. Um, so see this, this form um, that you have up um, and you sent it to me already. So I'm looking at it. Um, so the first comes the roster and then this form, this form can't be used to complete that roster. Yeah. The two really have to be sent concurrently because the roster is how I double check that it's sort of how I like fact check them against each other to make sure that the enrollment is correct. Um, you don't have to send them in any particular order. Um, but I do need both. Okay. Um, it just be, I think it would be helpful to have employees fill this out and then compile the roster. But if you're kind of fact checking between the two of them, I understand. Thank you. Yeah. También quiero recordar que es un espacio bilingüe, entonces si quieren hacer sus preguntas en español. I also want to remind people that this is a bilingual space, so if you want to make your questions in Spanish, you can do so. Cool. Um, I'm happy to move into the accident and disability uh, piece. And then if, if you think of um, dental and vision questions that come up, we can have a little time for that at the end as well. Um, great. So accident and disability insurance are a program, a, a pretty new program to the worker benefits program, which is exciting. Um, we rolled this out sort of as a pilot um, in 2021, but um, are really getting more of a critical mass of folks enrolled this year, which is great. Um, accident and disability insurance are two different types of insurance. Um, accident insurance is a very simple sort of mechanism where you pay a monthly fee called a premium and because you're paying that fee, if you get into some sort of accident and need emergency medical care, um, the accident insurance will offer you like flat payments based on different incidences that happen during that emergency. Um, and the point of that is to cover whatever costs you have that you need. Um, it's not like getting reimbursed for medical costs. It's not like you submit a claim to your health insurance company. Um, you submit a claim saying like, I got in an accident and I went to the hospital and they gave me an x-ray and I got stitches. And then the insurance company will send you a check saying, here's your money, spend it how you need it. Disability insurance, um, I think is maybe a little more familiar. Um, it's meant to partially replace your income uh, in the event that you can't work because you've been in an accident, you have an illness that is keeping you from working or you are pregnant or giving birth. Um, and it's only for people who are like the gestational parent. Um, it's unfortunately not available for other kinds of parental leave. Um, because 
the Federation, and because our insurance broker is based in Pennsylvania, we have rates for accident and disability insurance that are based in Pennsylvania. Um, this means that it's some of like the cheaper rates in the country. So if, especially if you're in a state like New York or California, um, the disability insurance will be cheaper through this plan than you could probably find um, through another plan. Uh, yeah, the other important thing about these, this program is that unlike the dental and vision insurance, these are what's called voluntary benefits, which means that individuals have the complete freedom to choose whatever they want of these benefits or if they want them at all. Um, there's no minimum, there's no, um, there really isn't even coordination from the company um, about who enrolls and who doesn't. Um, basically your workplace, pays an annual fee of $75 for access to the benefits. And then each worker can individually choose if they want to sign up and pay for it themselves. Um, you can set it up so that the workplace pays, um, which, you know, there are various reasons why you might wanna do that. But the other, the, just sort of the thing to know about that is that that makes the benefits subject to tax um which they are not if the individual is paying um other cool thing about these benefits is that because the worker is paying for them themselves uh they can carry it with them if they go on to another job it's called a portable benefit and you can sort of picture like packing your insurance policy into a suitcase and carrying it away with you um do you go from one job to another Um, yeah, so it's the same open enrollment period as the dental and vision insurance. Uh, people have to sign up by December 8th, um, which is soon, wow. Um, coverage begins on January 1st. It provides up to six months of partial income replacement if someone can't work. Um, and there are options for the workplace to pay. There's also options to add coverage for if things happen um, in an on-the-job accident. Um, typically that's covered by workers' comp, but we know for various reasons, sometimes worker co-ops have trouble accessing workers' comp, comp both because of like qualification and cost. Uh, so that is an option. Um, and most importantly, we have this one-time special offer for the disability insurance. Um, during this open enrollment period, the disability insurance is guaranteed, um, which means that people cannot be uh, denied the coverage for um, pre existing conditions. Um, this is unfortunately unusual with disability insurance. Um, disability insurers can say, oh, you already were sick, so we aren't going to cover any sort of leave related to that illness. Um, but for this open enrollment period, there's sort of a, I don't know, you can say you're grandfathered in, um, where people will have everything 100% covered after one year of being on the plan if you have a pre existing condition. Um, so it can be really useful for if you have like a chronic illness and it's not impacting your ability to work now, but it could in the future. Um, it could be really useful for um, folks who are planning to become pregnant. It can help supplement uh, parental leave. Um, it can be really helpful if you work in an industry where if you got hurt, um, you wouldn't be able to do your job for a period of time. Um, there's a lot of reasons why disability insurance can be useful and, um, it can impact any of us at any time. Disability insurance rates are tricky because they're based on each person's individual income. Um, it's sort of a, a calculation for every person and uh, 
we have actually a calculator available on our website that people can um, figure out their own rates. Basically, disability insurance is uh, charged in increments of, or is covered in increments of 100. And so you pay, like if you're under age 49, you pay $2.14 per $100 of the benefit that you would receive if you were collecting your disability benefit. Um, I don't want to get too in the weeds with that right now because it's just a little bit tricky to figure out. Um, accident insurance, like I said, it offers these fixed payments. Um, it's meant to supplement medical insurance. It is not a replacement for medical insurance. It will not, like if you're uninsured, it will not cover what your hospital bill would be. Um, but it can sort of help cover those out-of-pocket costs that come um, with, with emergencies, even if it's just like missing a couple of days of work or needing to like pay for more expensive transportation. Um, we know that medical emergencies are really expensive in this country, so it can help support that. And uh, these are those rates. Uh, with accident insurance, you can get coverage for your dependents. Um, and it's just these monthly premiums, about 20 bucks a month for an individual worker. Um, yeah. So, like I said before, people can um, become a member of, if people are a member of the USFWC, um, their organization pays $75 once each year. Um, and people can choose to enroll in that. There's also a 20 hour a week uh, minimum there. Um, billing for that, for the benefits goes directly through our broker um, at Diversified Human Solutions. They will set up like an auto pay situation um, that I'm pretty uninvolved with. And then that annual fee gets billed by the USFWC. Um, yeah, and so similarly to with the Dental and Vision, uh, if you're ready to sign up, you let me know. I send the form, uh, I send the invoice. Uh, we'll only send the invoice if people actually enroll. Sometimes people distribute the form and no one ends up signing up and like, we're not gonna charge you for that. Um, and then follow-up happens with Diversified Human Solutions, which is the broker. Oh, okay. That is the end of my accident and disability insurance spiel. I'm seeing some questions come through in the chat. So I'll get to those and then I'll take whatever other questions folks have. Um, I'm seeing a question, can New York be on the disability insurance plan? Yes, um, all of the plans are available uh, in New York state. We don't have health insurance available there. Um, and then would the disability coverage timeline change if you become a member of the USFWC sometime next year? Um, as far as I know, the answer for that is yes. Um, I've had a little bit of, um, it's just a new plan with the disability insurance company. And so they have said that they'll do that, but, um, I, I can't guarantee it, basically. Uh, Anna, I'm seeing your hand. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, <clears throat> I'm uncertain if I'm following um, everything. I just wanted to ask um, <clears throat> the accident insurance. I have a few questions, but the accident insurance, um, um, so you're paying into like a fund um, that can be utilized if you are in an accident. Is it re reimbursable if you're not? Is that how it works? Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a good question. And I appreciate the ask for clarification because um, I did just fly through all of that. Um, mm -hmm. The So with accident insurance, it 
I mean, theoretically, that's how all insurance works, right? We're putting our money into a pool with the idea that if we need money from the pool, it will be available. Um, unfortunately, the way that insurance companies work is that they won't give you that money back if you don't need it. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's better for me, I, I prefer to just think of the mindset of like, I am paying this so that if I need it, it is there. Um, but you wouldn't get that money back if you don't need it. Okay. All right. And then um, the disability one um, is the same, right? I think you were starting to say like, you can pick a coverage amount. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. you you can with disability insurance you pick how much you want to insure of your income up to 60 percent of your pre-tax income so if you decide i only want to pay the premium for 50 percent or 45 percent you can choose that got it and then you said which were the eligible i might have missed that slide for uses for the disability insurance? Yeah. Um, so disability insurance will cover um, illness or injury that took place outside of the workplace unless you have the additional coverage that will be for things that happen in the workplace. And then it can also be used for uh, to help supplement parental leave for people who are pregnant or giving birth. Got it. Um, and sorry, one more question then. Yeah. Um, you were mentioning, you just said it right now, um, for people who, um, oh yeah, workers comp. Um, in our case, like it's our understanding that the workers would be owners and so they wouldn't have workers comp because they're not employees. Um, mm -hmm. And, and so you were saying that in that situation, we could use the accident insurance. So in the place of workers come, is that right? So for, it's actually the on the job disability coverage that could sort of mm. serve the purpose that workers mm. comp sometimes does. Um, I, because workers comp is different state to state, I. Mm -hmm. I can't really speak to how it works specifically with owner coverage, but I do know we have some groups that are using on the job accident insurance or disability insurance, excuse me, um, to sort of serve that purpose. Okay, got it. Thank you. Yeah. These are really great questions and it's a lot of information so please like don't hold back if you want me to restate something or anything um carla i'm seeing your hand hi thank you um you might have already covered it and i'm still trying to wrap my head around it i know that the enrollment ends december 8th mm -hmm. uh, we are a new cooperative so we only have one member at this time mm -hmm. um so when new members enroll, like uh, next year, in the middle of the year, how would that process work in order to get them covered? Or do they mm -hmm. have to wait till October? Um, so if you implement the plan now for the one worker, we'd have to talk about it a little bit because sometimes one worker plans can happen and sometimes they can't. Um, but if people are joining the co-op or the workplace mid-year, they can join the plan mid-year. Thank you. And follow-up mm -hmm. question to that. Um, the worker that we do have is currently getting uh, coverage through their partner at their partner's work. Mm -hmm. um, so like say, for example, once we have nine members, but three of them, or four of them are also getting covered by their partner's uh, work, mm -hmm. would we register as a 10 member co-op or would we register as a five member co-op? Um, 
you'd so you'd be the administrative fee would be based on the number of people enrolled and then the roster you you really only have to submit the names of the people who are enrolling that makes sense thank you yeah Well, I really don't have more presentation. So I'm the the stage now is really open for questions or if you want to like riff on healthcare. Um Zaina, I see your hand. Um thank you so much. I have two sort of related questions. Mm -hmm. Um one is kind of like just listening to all of this as someone who has struggled to access healthcare as most of us have um, since I came off of my parents' insurance. Mm -hmm. um, I'm like, I want it all. I want health and dental and vision and uh, accident and disability. Um, what advice would you have in terms of um, knowing how to focus and where to start? Mm -hmm. um, or should we just try to go for all of it? Um, if you have any, yeah, kind of advice around navigating, um, initiating this process. Mm -hmm. And kind of on a related note, um, as the accident and disability don't involve, um, it's, it's on the individual, I suppose, mm -hmm. and there aren't any organizational expenses to that. Would there be any downsides to just offering that um, for anybody who might be interested. Mm -hmm. If that makes any sense. Yeah, no, I, that totally makes sense. Those are really good questions. I think from my view, the answer on accident and disability insurance is that I think like, if you have the capacity to pay the $75 annual fee and to distribute the information, there's really no reason not to. Um, you know, even if one person decides to enroll, that's a really small organizational expense for something that like could be really useful for people in the long run. Um, I think that, so yeah, that that's kind of my view there. Um, I think it's a really hard question of figuring out what, what should come first. Um, you know, we decided to offer dental and vision first as part of the worker benefits program because of the, because of the simplicity, um, because it was relatively low cost and because we were hearing from our members that like offering full health insurance was not financially feasible for the groups that like didn't already have group health insurance. And so dental and vision was a really good like sort of on-ramp to provide like what is a pretty solid benefit that people can't access through other channels. Um, I think, yeah, I mean, from my view, like, like the dental insurance really and truly covers like a lot of really important dental care. Um, the vision insurance is really useful for people who need glasses and contacts, it is essentially like glasses insurance or like contacts insurance. Like it doesn't cover like major like eye issues. Um, so like that's something to consider um, if you're trying to sort of prioritize. Um, but, but something that also I think is really great about this program is that like, you know, maybe you have a lot of people in your club that like really need glasses, like you can choose that. Um, and like, if everybody's got dental insurance through some other means, then get the vision insurance. Um, it's really about what is the most, the most needed and the most relevant and like what is within the financial capabilities of the co-op or the business to, to grant. Awesome. 
awesome. Thank you yeah. so much for that. Um, and if I may ask one more thing. Sure. Um, we've done like a series of needs assessments uh, surveys among our, our workers to try to figure out what is most important to everyone. Um, and I was wondering if you have any tools or resources that would be helpful um, in, in, in having, like navigating those conversations or really trying to get to the, the crux of what the highest priorities are among staff. Um, that would be really useful too. Yeah, I think that's that's a big thing that we're thinking about for developing in the next year or so. Um, I don't have like templates or anything available right now. Um, one thing that is really useful is in deciding like if group health insurance is a right is the right call is um, the ACA Affordable Care Act or Obamacare. Um, there's a subsidy calculator available through the Kaiser Family Foundation. Um, and that can give you a really good sense right off the bat of if your workers are receiving subsidies. Um, because if people have the healthcare that's really well subsidized through the Affordable Care Act or through um, Medicaid, like then offering a group health plan might not be a good option because that would take those things away. Um, but it, I mean, it sounds like you all at Reams have done a lot of surveying and um, it's something we've been working on internally at the Federation as well. And so I'm wondering, I think like there's some room next year to do some sort of like everybody putting their heads together and like maybe maybe that's a webinar, maybe that's a, a sort of resource guide. I'm, I'm really excited about the, the possibilities that we have there to work together. Yeah, for sure. That would, that would be awesome. Yeah. Um, I'm seeing another question in the chat. Um, if some people in the co-op only want to be on disability insurance, um, can you do that? Or do you need a majority of the co-op to sign up? Um, great clarifying question. So for disability insurance, if only one person wants to sign up, that's totally okay. Um, there's no minimum for disability insurance or for accident insurance. Um, so if only one person wants it, it can still be a really good uh, resource to offer. Uh, Celia. Gracias. Lo voy a decir en español, Kate. I'm going to say it in Spanish. So some help, please. So this is not a question, more a request. We would like to, and I don't know if it's possible, if one of you can support us with this, is to do a, like, a, I'm not sure if I'm calling it projection of how much it would cost us as a cooperative, as a business, our expenses, if we take this and this insurance, if you could help us with that, like help us with the accounting how much mm -hmm. it would cost us a year to have the insurance plans since we don't have a lot of experience in that i don't know if there's somebody in the federation who could support us in that regard mm -hmm. um yeah it's a really good question um i'm definitely available to support with sort of figuring out how much the dental and vision insurance will cost for a year um, I can support with sort of walking through um, the disability insurance uh, payments. Um, I think sort of along the lines of what I was just saying uh, with Zena is that like, we've been doing some work internally at the Federation around healthcare, like health insurance projections. Um, and it's something that I've been just learning a lot about personally. And so I think in the next year or so, we might have some more resources about like medical insurance on top of the dental and vision. Um, but if you want help figuring out how much dental and vision is going to cost, like email me and that's, that's not a problem at all. Um, 
Yeah, well, I welcome more questions. I also just welcome more like thoughts or um, if they're more like big picture questions. Um, I'd love to just know what people are thinking about, what challenges people are facing. Um, that really helps me in shaping my work and the way that I, I'm, I'm here to support USFWC members. That's that's what I do. So it, it's a real privilege to get to talk with you all and hear about what you're thinking about. Yeah, can I add Maddie just quickly? Si puedo ayudar Maddie, sí, rápidamente. So Mary already mentioned that I wanted to emphasize I would like to know what are the challenges that you're facing to join up the plan because we heard your questions but we don't know if somebody doesn't join the plan many times we don't know why they didn't join the plan so I would like to know a little bit more of the why or what are the challenges that you're facing as a cooperative that might not allow you to make a decision this year or in previous years. Celia, go ahead if you want to. Sí, pues yo voy a hablar por mis compañeras y por so mí. I'm gonna sh share on behalf of my colleagues and for myself. That's precisely the issue. We don't know if we'll be able to finance the cost. We're not sure if the money that we're making is going to be enough. So that's why for my question, if we can leave the plan at any moment, because we maybe we might not be able to, maybe things are not going as well. So if there is an, an issue with kind of taking ourselves out of the plan, but maybe in the future. So that would be the main issue. And that's why I want to do that projection to see if we're going to be able to do it or if we need to wait a little bit more. I don't know. So for us, that's the issue. Yeah, it's a really big issue. Um, and yeah, I mean, we're, I'm, I'm trying to run as flexible of a program as I can. Um, so yeah, I'm really, I'm excited to talk with you more, Celia, about the, the costs and um, I'm happy to talk with anybody about that and sort of strategizing and also what we can do at the Federation to be, to be as flexible as possible. Um, the, the rates aren't something that we can negotiate, but um, thinking through sort of strategies on, on payment plans, if there's a moment of hardship, um, or uh, if the benefit needs to stop mid-year. Um, we've, we've been able to do that really flexibly because of COVID so far. Um, and I think overall the insurance companies are getting a little bit more uh, flexible. Um, all right, I'm gonna drop, I'm gonna stop screen sharing and I'm gonna drop some links. Uh, we've got our worker benefits website that is sort of just the home base for all of the information about the plans. Um, you can email me at benefits at usworker.coop to get started. You also can fill out um, this form, which comes to my email. So it's the same thing. Um, I also wanted to make sure that folks knew, I guess I will share my screen. Um, I've put together a resource library, so you can reach that just by clicking there. Um, 
And this includes like all the PDFs and info sheets um, about the plans. Uh, we've also got that available in Spanish. Um, yeah, all of our, all of these materials are bilingual for the most part. Um, and then there's also the worker benefits FAQ, which I try to keep updated, um, but it just sort of goes through the, like some of the bigger, more common questions that I've had. And then I'm also trying to just flesh it out as I get more questions. Um, so yeah, you can access all that through our website. And yeah, it's been really awesome talking with you all. This is such a great group um, and really great questions. Um, I'm going to close out presenting, but if anyone has like other specific questions, I'll hang out for a couple minutes. Um, so yeah, thank you all so much. Thanks, Kate, for your support and Raquel um, and uh, Ron and Alice for your interpretation. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Celia. Yeah, I think I think something I will say to folks that are still here is if you still have questions, even if you ask them here, even if you've asked them before, don't hesitate to ask them four or five times again, you know, as many times as you need to, because the information just takes time to digest. So like, please, if after this call, you take things back to your co-op and need to come back to us and ask the questions again, like, don't, don't stress, just, just do. Um, yeah. Yeah, because it's a lot. And it keeps me fresh, so. Did you mention if you would be able to email the presentation? Or is um, that in one of the links? We will, yeah, we'll definitely send the slides out. Um, I think since this was mostly a presentation, I will send out the recording. Um, Great, thank you. If you do want like the, like, I just sent a, um, voy a cambiar al español para un poco de. Um, I'm gonna si, switch to Spanish. We've also done presentations a little bit longer with more details and all those presentations, we have those recordings online and I have just sent the links for the presentations in, in English and Spanish, and that's where all the information is located. I know that Maddie has already shared, but the webinars are also there. Hey, Maddie, I dropped yeah. a little comment in the chat. Um, Just to see if I could hear anything you have to share around medical insurance in North Carolina or how we could get a quote. Yeah, um, so North Carolina is one of the states where we offer or where our broker is able to find um, good rates on medical insurance. Um, and so to do that, you'd need to send a um, basically a list of the workers in the business with their dates of birth, zip codes, um, whether or not they use tobacco. Um, and their legal gender marker. And then he can draw up a quote. Awesome, thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, and the other it's states, it's... the other states where we have that is, the states are in North Carolina, Maryland, Washington, Pennsylvania, Texas, Colorado, and Illinois. Uh, yeah, see Lali, I see your hand. Bueno. Um, I guess I, I have a question ah, about... Okay. Um, okay. Bueno. Can I communicate about talking more about the program? Um, so I'm interested here in Chicago. Great. So you can uh, email benefits at usworker.coop. Um, 
But I'm going to go to Silali's question. Oh, I, sorry. I don't know if this is, um, has been said before, but just wondering if there's like any, um, oh, okay. if like immigration status is, is a factor. Um, I'm, LA Co-op Lab is, we're incubating a Radiate cooperative. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so yeah, a lot of members have um, items. And so just curious to know like what requirements are needed for enrolling in the benefits through, yeah. Yeah, as long as people have an item, they can enroll. Cool. Yeah. Um, and another question I had was around um, health insurance and since since um, members only have ITINs, um, I think there are some barriers for them to access um, public benefits in California. And I think those are the more affordable ones in California. Just curious if y'all have made any progress or know of any other. I unfortunately don't have resources in California right now. Um, yeah, I, I wish I had more to, more to share than that, but unfortunately I don't. No worries, thank you. Cool. Well, now it's 4.30. Got any other questions? All right. Well, I'm going to wrap this up, but feel free to email me with more questions. Um, really happy to talk about the stuff whenever. So yeah, thank you all so much and uh, look forward to talking with you soon. <laughs>